Good morning, friend. <laughs> it is early. It's still not even fully light outside, but we've got a lot of big projects we've got to get to today. And wanted to get in the kitchen first thing so we can get a couple things in the oven. We can head outside before it gets too warm outside. We've got some garden maintenance, maybe a little bit of harvesting. We've got to rip some stuff out to plant some things. But first I need to get a food preservation project going so that can be in the oven. And we're gonna make a zucchini chocolate cake. We've gotta make some bread for dinner. And I just wanna get some stuff in the oven so that when we're outside, the oven can be working for us. So the first thing we're gonna start with is dealing with some of these Roma tomatoes. This is just some of the tomatoes that I have right now. I have a basket full and a bowl full over on the counter that I harvested last night. I've got a ton of tomatoes still out in the garden and I've got a ton of tomatoes starting to accumulate in the freezer. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab all these Roma tomatoes that are ripe and we are gonna get going on tomato paste today. Tomato paste is a labor of love and so it does take some time to cook down, throw in tomatoes. So I want to get this process going. I'm coming through and grabbing the ripest ones. I harvested these two days ago and I've just let them sit on the counter so they can continue to ripen. And it looks like I just saw one with a bad spot. I still need to wash all of these. So I'm just getting them in this bowl so we can take them over to the sink and get them washed up. I'm removing the stem and I'm just leaving that on this table. Let's start processing this. So these are the tomatoes I grabbed last night and there's more where this came from. The first thing I need to do was get this washed. So I'm gonna bring it over to the sink. except for the fact that it's gonna take a while to do. So all I'm gonna do, I need to get a bowl for compost, is slice the top of the tomato off, put that in there for the chickens, and we're gonna blend up the tomatoes before we even start cooking them. I think by blending them up, it's gonna create more surface area on the tomato. And we're gonna get it in this roaster pan, and we're going to start it on the stove because I'm gonna be in the kitchen for a little bit doing some other things while we make some other things. And then I'll put it in the oven when we run outside to do our garden projects. So just cutting the tops off, getting them in the blender. I am choosing to use Roma tomatoes, which are a paste tomato because they have way less water content. It's gonna be a lot less cooking down to get a tomato paste consistency. I am not canning this recipe, so I'm not worried about taking the skins off, but I wanna use my high-powered blender so that I can really pulverize this pulp into nothing so that it's got a good texture when it's done. So I'll start with that. Get the lid on. And start on low.
I'm gonna get my Dutch oven in the oven because I'm gonna make some bread. We're gonna make shakshuka today and I think that I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but it's a tomato sauce based egg dish and we are gonna have some homemade bread with it. Gotta move this rack here. I'll just set this over here for now. We need to preheat the oven along with the Dutch oven so that we can bake our bread. This is a no need bread recipe that I started last night. I can show you how I did that. This is one of the easiest recipes. It doesn't take but four minutes, if that, to put together. In a bowl, you're gonna put one and a half cups of water, a half teaspoon of active dry yeast, three and a quarter cups of all purpose flour, and two teaspoons of salt. Mix it together until it becomes a rough dough. You don't have to knead it at all. You want it to look kind of shaggy. And then one thing I do, you're gonna see how quickly this comes together. I just use my Danish dough whisk. One thing I like to do once I have the dough mixed is I do spray it with a little bit of avocado spray just so that it doesn't dry out at the top. And then I take a damp cloth and I put a damp cloth over it and I let it sit overnight. So just like that, you saw real time how easy that was to put together. Before I shake the bread, I'm going to get my tomatoes on the stove to cook. Once the bread is out of the oven, we'll transfer this to the oven because it'll be a safer while we're out in the garden. And when I say safer, I just mean that less likely to burn because it's kind of a more gentle overall around heat. So to shape this bread, we need a piece of parchment. I decided to go ahead and process all the Roma tomatoes that I had on that counter or table over there because this is going to cook down so much. I wanted to get this whole thing full and I wanted to get as much tomatoes taken care of as possible, which is a relief. It always feels good when I've started the preservation of something so that I know that it's you know not going to go bad or go to waste or anything like that. So the next thing we're gonna deal with is a whole lot of zucchini because I've got a lot of zucchini in my refrigerator that needs to be processed and we are going to make a chocolate zucchini bundt cake out of some of it because I've got a family dinner we're going to tomorrow and I offered to bring dessert because I have an abundance of zucchini and I thought that this recipe would be a fun one to try. I've never made it before so we are going to give it a try. And I do have this on pretty warm because I am in the kitchen and I can watch it. We've got our bread going, so let me set up everything we need to process the zucchini. Everybody who's close to me and that knows me has gotten zucchini this year. It's been the year of the zucchini and tomatoes. I've gotten a bumper crop of both of those. And I'm grateful because last year I maybe got five to total zucchini and maybe next year I'll get none. So we're gonna wash these up, process them, and make a cake. I've got my KitchenAid, what is this called? The KitchenAid food processor attachment, which makes this job a lot easier, but I do need to wash up these zucchinis. I'm sure when I go out there in a little bit, I'll even find more that need to be harvested. just 
cut the tops off and get these ready to be processed. If they have really big seeds, I'll cut the seeds out and give those to the chickens. If the seeds aren't too bad, I'll just shred the whole thing full. I'm gonna get a bunch of it cut and processed or cut up and then I'll turn this on and I'll process a bunch of it once I have a ton of it prepped. A couple of the zucchinis were a little close to, I guess, the refrigerator cold section of my refrigerator. And so they froze in the refrigerator. So that those parts of the zucchini, I'm just going to give to the chickens. This has been a crazy zucchini year. I am so excited that I was able to really supplement my chicken's diet and honestly, my friends and family's diet. Um, if you know me personally, you may have gotten, a, I'm calling it zucchini DoorDash, where I load up a bag of produce, zucchini and tomatoes and cucumbers or whatever I might have, and I go and I drop it off on your doorstep <laughs> because it has been such a blessing bumper crop this year. I'm just blown away. This white zucchini, it's called a white long zucchini, has been the most prolific zucchini I have ever grown. It is absolutely incredible how prolific the zucchini has been. And I have to say, again, last time we were processing zucchini together, I was talking about how much I love this food processor, and I still do. It made this job so, so easy. I can link it down below for you. I just went out to the chicken coop and collected a bunch of eggs for the cake because we need five eggs total. And my timer went off for my bread. So what we're gonna do is take the lid off and let it finish cooking without the lid on so it can brown, ooh, sorry. So it can brown up nicely and finish cooking. So put that in for another 10 minutes. And now we're gonna make our cake. The tomato paste is cooked down quite a bit. You can already see that. And I'm just letting it boil away. I'm stirring it every few minutes just to make sure that it doesn't burn. I've got a cup of butter here that I melted. It looks like I need to melt it a little bit more. And I have preheated the oven to 325 degrees to bake our cake. I'm gonna prep this bundt pan in a way that you all had recommended to me when making a chocolate bundt cake. First, I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of spray. And we're gonna use cocoa powder instead of flour to dust this because I'm making a chocolate cake. That way it doesn't show up as much. So I'm gonna get a good amount of cocoa powder in here and then I'm gonna take it to the sink and try to get it on all the sides. For the cake batter, we need one cup of butter, one cup of white sugar, one cup of brown sugar, three whole eggs, two egg yolks, I'm gonna go wash my hands. A tablespoon of vanilla. Two cups of shredded zucchini. I'm gonna whisk this together. I'm gonna add one cup of sour cream. Good pinch of salt. We're gonna add two and three fourths cups of all purpose flour, a half a cup of cocoa powder, one and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of baking soda. Now we're gonna stir this together, and in less than 10 minutes, we have a zucchini cake ready for the oven. Oh, I forgot cinnamon. This recipe calls for cinnamon. We're gonna do a half a teaspoon. 
So I don't think you'll really taste it a ton. I think it'll just help round out the flavor of the chocolate with the zucchini. It also called for espresso powder and chocolate chips. I didn't have espresso powder, so I just left it out. And I don't like chocolate chips in my cake, so I left that out too. Now I'm gonna get our cake batter into our prepared bunt pan. It said this needs to cook in a 10 inch bunt pan. I think my bunt pan is a little bit small for that. So I might have to make a couple muffins too. Yeah, I don't think I wanna fill it any more than that. Yeah, I think it'll take too long to cook if I put all this batter in there. Muffins are in the oven. The bread is done, so I'm gonna take this out of the oven. This bread is so good. It's an artisan style loaf that takes less than 10 minutes of your own actual cooking time. The way I know it's done is I tap on it and it sounds kind of hollow. My plan was as soon as I got that cake in the oven was to run outside and do a couple garden projects. But because I have cupcakes, those aren't gonna take very long. So I grabbed out my plums. I pitted these, these are plums from the homestead. And they're one of our favorite things. They are so good. And I pitted them. And now I wanna get them just in a freezer Ziploc bag. And I think we're just gonna eat these. I think I'll pull them out and thaw them. And they are just so good. I don't think I want to turn them into plum jam or anything like that because we already have that in the pantry downstairs. I think we just want to enjoy the fresh flavor that they are. So I figured I would take this moment to do this. I also just went ahead and turned the freeze dryer on and I loaded it up with some zucchini that I had pre-frozen. So that's going to be going for us today. I needed to defaw it and kind of start it over again. So that's what I did with that. And then up until those little cupcakes are done, I'm gonna start bagging up this zucchini as well. I think I could put these chunks of plums in baked oatmeal. I can thaw them and chop them up and put them in yogurt regular oatmeal, stovetop oatmeal, things like that. The flavor of these is unlike anything Josh and I have ever had. They are super sweet, but they also kind of maintain their tartness. So it really is like the perfect balance of sweet and tart. And the baby absolutely loves them. So I'm gonna put plums 2023 and we will go through these. And that plum hot sauce, if you missed it, I made plum hot sauce and it is incredible. I've been eating it every single day. This will feel good to get these two cookie sheets out of the freezer. Work smarter, not harder, right? <laughs> I wanted to flash freeze these so that they wouldn't freeze in one big chunk. These were really juicy, and if I had put all of these plum slices in this bag, threw it in the freezer, they would have frozen all completely together, and I wouldn't have been able to take out just good portion sizes. Now, you can see I'm putting this in a freezer bag, not a vacuum seal bag, because I want to be able to access these really easily. And I think within the next two months, these will be eaten. So I'm gonna go throw these in the freezer real quick. It almost looks like our zucchini muffins are done. Every time I get something taken care of like that, checked off the list, I feel like a relief that I didn't let it go bad. No, those are not done. So I'm gonna start packaging up some zucchini until those are done. Those probably only have five more minutes. Sometimes it can be hard when you're baking chocolate things to know when they're fully done without them getting burnt. I'm gonna pull out some of these freezer bags. Oh. That's the timer I had set for the muffins. Okay, so I need to write on here what 
This is, I think I'm gonna do some that are two cups and some that are four. So I'll start with two cups and the year. I don't need to write what it is because it's pretty obvious it's red zucchini. If you just heard something fall on the floor, it was a plum. If you were watching closely, when I took the one tray of plums off the other tray, I did not realize there was a bunch of frozen plums on the bottom side of that tray, and I could not figure out where all these plums kept <laughs> coming from. Oh my goodness. It was a disaster. And then one of my dogs ended up grabbing a plum and was chewing on it uh, in the living room. <laughs> I was tracking down plums for like the next half an hour and Josh was super confused. He's like, where are all these plums coming from? And I could not figure out where they were coming from. Anyway, mystery is solved now that I've seen <laughs> that they were stuck on the bottom of the cookie sheet. Once I got all of them packaged up, I'm going to take them to my vacuum sealer and get them vacuum sealed. Again, this has been a really good vacuum sealer so far this year. Perfect. So I got two, three, four cup bags and I got two, four, six, two cup bags. So I'm going to go throw these in the freezer right now. I just took the cake out of the oven. It is done. I'm going to let it cool for about 10 minutes before we attempt to turn it out. I've been having difficulties turning out bundt cakes lately. I took out my other zucchini muffins and I went ahead and I got the counter clean and this kitchen kind of tidied back up. I wiped the counters off and I put away the zucchini shredding mess. Now my plan was to have that bundt cake in the oven and go outside while that was cooking, but it really didn't take that long to cook. I was able to get everything else done. I'm kind of surprised it only took like 40 minutes to cook and a lot of times when I make bundt cakes they can take a couple hours to cook. So let me show you what the tomato paste is looking like. It's absolutely beautiful. It's at the perfect stage if you wanted it to be just tomato sauce. Can this up like tomato sauce for spaghetti and pizza sauce or something like that. But it needs to cook down probably by another half or so. I mean, you can see where we're at now, how much it's cooked down. I've had the oven at 425 since putting it in here because that was the same temperature as the bread. But now we're about to head outside. There's one project I've been wanting to get to for quite some time and I wanna to get to it today. I want to turn this down to 300. Now that the tomato paste is cooking away, we can head out into the garden and do some maintenance things that I've been wanting to do for a couple weeks now. We are going to remove some of the spring weather crops because they are just done. It's been in the hundreds and they just can't survive and tolerate that type of heat. So this is some snow peas that I had planted here and I had planted them a few weeks late. So we did get a massive harvest off them but they didn't quite you know, grow to their potential because I planted them too late and it was just too warm outside. And then with the 100 degree weather, it's just that the plants are done. And that's totally fine. We were able to get so much produce off of them. And look here, you can see I find one zucchini and then I end up finding another zucchini. This is an Italian striped zucchini, which has also been a very prolific zucchini for me. So I wanted to get these snow peas removed for a couple reasons. One, I want to plant something else here. And two, it's just kind of an eyesore. These plants are done, they're dead and brown, and most everything else in the garden is really green and lush and beautiful right now. And so just for my own, you know, vanity, I guess, or enjoyment of being out in the garden, I was kind of tired of looking at these dead plants. So we're going to get them removed so it can just be a little bit more beautiful. I will end up probably planting either more snow peas here or maybe some lettuce. I don't know. We'll figure it out together. But on this day, all I had planned was to get these plants removed. Now in this bed is also a bunch of cabbage, the red and green that you see. That's cabbage. And I planted that way too late. <laughs> I got them on sale at the grocery store because it was too late to plant cabbage and the grocery store was just trying to get rid of the plants. And I bought them and I probably shouldn't because I wasted my $2 on these six packs and lesson learned, don't plant cabbages 
in July because <laughs> it's too hot. So that looks a lot better getting the snow peas removed. And I'm also gonna go around the other side of the bed and some of the red cabbages I end up leaving and I'm gonna see what happens with them. But these green cabbages, they all went to flower on me because they it was just too hot for them. Now I do have this weed fabric down and I have to say I have been loving the weed fabric. It has been amazing. So I end up cleaning up most of that cabbage and then in that bed there was also lettuce. I leave the lettuce and I've got a pumpkin in there. I leave all that because that is totally fine. We are harvesting lettuce and here I just went ahead and I cleaned up this bed. This was the other bed that had snow peas and it looks a lot better. I wanted to show you something real quick here. So I could save the seeds from these peas that I just took out of the garden because they're dried on here. Those would be perfect for planting, but I didn't like these snow peas that well. They were fine, they just weren't super sweet. I do not plan to plant these next year because the flavor was not my favorite. I originally had planted Oregon, Oregon snow peas and those are so good. And my germination on those was so poor that I had to go ahead and replant some, just some snow peas that I had seed from and that's what I had and I just didn't like the flavor. So next year I plan to plant sugar snap peas and the Oregon snow peas because the flavor is fantastic. So even though I could save those seeds, I know that if I save them, they're just gonna sit around, I'm not gonna plant them, and I don't wanna put my effort and time into saving seeds and taking up space if I'm not going to plant them. I'm trying to be super intentional about my time and energy and that would not be a good use of my time and energy. So this is looking beautiful. It still has a ways to go. I'm gonna turn the heat back up since I'm gonna be in here. There you can see just how much it has reduced. So it still has a ways to go before it's tomato paste consistency, but we can get dinner going while we wait for that. Now, the moment of truth. Can we get this bunt cake out? <gasps> we did it. <laughs> First time in a long time I've gotten a bunt cake out perfectly. Friend, it has been a wonderful day so far. We've got so much stuff done. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get lunch going for us. I've been wanting to clean out those garden beds for a couple weeks now, and it feels good to have a bunch more of the tomatoes processed so that those are gonna be safe for I just wanted to check on it. I just turned the heat up all winter long while we can enjoy it all winter long. So we're gonna make, I'm, I'm gonna butcher this. It's called shashuka, and it's traditionally a breakfast food, but we're gonna have it for lunch today. I have made it once before, but it was probably 10 years ago. So this is the first time I'm gonna make it with some garden fresh goodness. I have some onions from the garden. I've got tomatoes from the garden one cayenne pepper and two small red peppers. When I was looking at recipes, there's a billion different ways to make this. A billion might be an exaggeration, but a bunch of different ways. Some call for pepper, some don't call for pepper, some call for different spices. So I am gonna kind of just use those recipes as guidelines and I'm going to make up my own. And I don't really want leftovers because I don't think this would be great leftovers. So I think I'm not gonna use both of these onions. I think I'm just gonna use one of them and I'll put that in the fridge. So I'm gonna get this on the stove to start sauteing. This is probably my favorite tomato and it's a Dr. Witchy's. You can see how little seeds there are in it. So for a slicing tomato, it's sweet, it's firm, and it's just so good. I'm using different varieties of tomatoes to make this dish 
because I think they'll all add a little bit of a different flavor and kind of make it just a little bit more of a complex dish. Or at least that's what I'm thinking, but I don't know. But you can see just how firm these tomatoes are. They're beautiful for sandwiches, beautiful for salads. And I think they would make a really good sauce too because there's, they don't have a ton of seeds and liquid compared to some of the other varieties I grew. Now I'm gonna get half of this hot pepper chopped up. I'm gonna taste it real quick. See how hot it is. Cause some of them hadn't been very hot would have been making hot sauce. to it. Not bad though. I think I'm going to do the whole thing. Those onions smell divine. So let's get the rest of this pepper in there. To the sauteed onions and peppers, I'm going to add a little bit of smoked paprika and add one of our garlic pucks. Now I need to add a little bit of tomato paste and I'm just gonna grab it from the oven. I'm gonna saute that up. When I was looking this recipe up just now, it does say that this is served traditionally for breakfast or lunch or even a light dinner. And friend, it is so easy and so good. It's so, it's light, but comforting at the same time. It's kind of interesting. So after I sauteed the onions and the spices and the pepper together, I threw the tomatoes in and I simmered those for a little bit, probably about five minutes. I had this pan on super high and then I put four eggs in two for Josh two for me I'm going to slice up some bread and we are going to serve this with our shashuka and friend if you've never made a no need easy bread like this this is probably the easiest bread to start with so go give it a try you will be able to do it no problem our shashuka is done the eggs are a little bit firm, the yolks, but they are set. I'm gonna top it with some really good quality olive oil. You don't wanna use your cheap olive oil for this. You want a nice, good quality one. And then I have some freeze-dried parsley, which tastes exactly like fresh from the garden. And now we're gonna dish this up and give it a taste and see what, what I think. I wanna get a little bit of the sauce. Now the yolk on this is supposed to be runny and mine is just, just a little bit runny, which is actually how I like my eggs. I don't like when they're super runny, but you can cook them however you want. So what you're supposed to do, I think, is take your bread and dip it in the yolk and get a little bit of the red sauce on it. And this is why this is a breakfast dish. I want to create the perfect bite here. A little bit of egg, tomato, pepper, and bread. You know what would be good too is if you toasted the bread. But this is just fresh bread that just came out of the oven not that long ago, so I think it's going to be divine just the way it is. It's going to be hot. That is so good. That is so easy. That did not even take 10 minutes to put together. 
really, really easy. I'm gonna call Josh in. We'll have a nice little lunch. He's working from home today, so we can do that. Kind of a perk of that. My tomato paste probably has another three hours to go. So I'm gonna finish cleaning up. We got so much stuff done. We got the freeze dryer going, the plums taken care of, a cake made for tomorrow, lunch for today. It is currently 3.09, and I don't know what time we put this, what is it called? <laughs> Tomato paste in the oven. I think it was around, I wanna say like 8 a.m. when we got it in the oven. And I have been in the kitchen doing things this whole time, and I've been stirring it constantly. Not constantly, I've been stirring it occasionally. I did turn, you can see how thick it is, the oven down to, ooh, it's hot, 200 degrees for, ooh, that's hot too, <laughs> for the last, I don't know, two hours or so, and I've just kind of been letting it basically dehydrate in the oven. You can see how much it's cooked down. This, remember, I filled this pot all the way to the tippity-tippity top. The texture, the color is beautiful absolutely beautiful my goal for this is actually to turn this into little pucks but i think it's going to do better doing that once this chills and i think that we can call it because it basically is holding its shape but i'm not going to turn it into pucks until i let this cool completely oh one thing to note when you're doing this that the sides do tend to burn so i was very 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 careful not to mix in that charred part into the tomato paste. So I want this just to be nice and clean and delicious flavor. And I just tasted this. It is so good. All it is is tomatoes. I didn't add any salt or anything like that because when I make a dish, I will you know season my dish. I don't think there's salt in store-bought tomato paste. This is absolutely beautiful. So now I'm gonna get it in this bowl so that I can refrigerate it. And tomorrow I can turn it into little tomato paste pucks. And again, I'm being very, very careful not to scrape the sides where the tomato paste is charred. I'm probably gonna to have to soak this roaster pan overnight too so that I can wash the sides of my roaster pan. Because right now they are very burnt on there. I think you could probably just keep cooking this down as much as you want, but this feels like, or seems like a pretty nice consistency. My thought is that it will firm up in the refrigerator when it's cold. At least that's my thought. I don't, I don't know for sure. I also kept saying, I think that cake is for tomorrow. Well, we're not having dinner with family until the following day. So I went ahead and wrapped up my cake in two layers of saran wrap, popped that in the freezer, because I want it to be as fresh as possible when we eat it in two days. The morning of the party, I'm gonna take it out of the freezer and I'm gonna make a cream cheese frosting, just your standard old, good old cream cheese frosting. And I'm gonna kind of just drizzle it on the top have you all seen Everything Bunt Cakes, <laughs> that cake shop? Everything Bunt Cakes, I think is what it's called. So I'm gonna do that design, I think, where it's just the cream cheese frosting is kind of, well, I'll show you what it, looks, what it looks like. But I am tired, I've been in the kitchen all day. I ran my dishwasher once today, I've got it loaded, I'm gonna turn it on, and did I put a tab in it? No, I need to put a tab in it. and I am going to run it one more time and then I'm gonna call it for today because I am tired and it is the weekend. Today is Friday, so happy Friday, friend. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and consider subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate you to come along this journey. This is still just the beginning of food preservation season. I'm looking over there probably at 100 pounds of tomatoes that I need to process still. And this was a great, woo, a great first step at processing tomatoes. This is actually the second tomato project I've done this year. I've already done bruschetta and diced tomatoes. 
and we have certainly eaten a lot of fresh tomatoes. If you want to watch more of my videos, I can pop a couple videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.